In the last 60 years, the global fishing fleet has caught 9 out of every 10 large fish, from tuna and swordfish to flounder, cod, and halibut. That's only 10% of these and other big fish remaining on the planet, while an international fleet pursues what is left of our collapsing fisheries. And for centuries, what happened over the horizon was invisible to the rest of the world. Out of sight, out of mind. But the tide is turning. By analyzing vessel location data picked up by satellites, we can shine a light on fishing activity worldwide. This is the Global Fishing Watch. Global Fishing Watch is a technology partnership between SkyTruth, Oceana, and Google, designed to show all of the trackable fishing activity in the ocean. The prototype uses AIS, Automatic Identification System, to visualize the movements of the global commercial fishing fleet. AIS is essentially an automated radio broadcast containing data about a ship's identity, GPS location, speed, and direction of travel, and was primarily designed to help avoid collisions at sea. But by analyzing this data, we can show the who, where, and when of commercial fishing around the world. In this view from the prototype, we filtered the display down to just 100 days of data and fishing activity from just three of the world's major commercial fishing fleets. Fishing activity from Spanish vessels is displayed in blue, the Japanese fleet in green, and the Korean fleet in red. One thing you'll observe is that while there is some overlap, Vessels from these three flag states generally appear to operate in different parts of the ocean. Compiling the straightforward visualization from individual AIS records would be extremely tedious, but with Global Fishing Watch, it takes only seconds. Here's another example. South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. Here you can see there's a well-defined ring of intense fishing activity all around the island. And looking at the bathymetry, that terrain map of the ocean floor, the reason why becomes obvious. You can see that these vessels are working the edge of a shelf on the seafloor. And with Global Fishing Watch, we can also dive deeper into the individual identity of these vessels. You can see that we have ships from all around the world, all working this remote island in the southern Atlantic Ocean. In this example, we're going to look at a single vessel in the southern Indian Ocean, a Portuguese longliner, the Valmatau you can easily see the distinctive pattern of fishing each time they set and retrieve their lines. Each time the AIS shows they were moving slowly out on the high seas in this back and forth pattern, we consider each of those data points a fishing detection. With Global Fishing Watch, we can show a heat map of all the detected fishing activity or connect the dots of AIS data to show whole vessel tracks. Global Fishing Watch is still a prototype but we envision the public using this tool to monitor special places they care about, like Pippa, the Phoenix Islands protected area. Pippa is a marine park, similar to the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument in U.S. waters, which was just significantly expanded by President Obama. Global Fishing Watch will enable the government of Kiribati and its citizens to monitor and report on fishing activity in and around Pippa when the area closes to all commercial fishing starting January 2015. As you can see, fishing activity inside the protected area has been indistinguishable from activity outside the area. But Global Fishing Watch can act as both a tool for monitoring and for fishermen to prove that they are obeying the rules and fishing responsibly. Combined with near real-time satellite data, Global Fishing Watch will make fishing activity more transparent, help citizens and governments better protect their fisheries, and even aid in identifying illegal fishing. Visit globalfishingwatch.org for more information and tell us how you would use this tool to help restore a thriving ocean.